Hello, I'm Jachan and welcome to another vlog, which I only upload once every few months. <laughs> so today's vlog, or this, this round's vlog, is going to be making a fursuit pre-made, I assume, and also con preparation for Phantasmagoria. So right now I'm editing slash exporting like Instagram scale photos for this pre-made that I just finished and I'm a couple short actually, I should probably get some more in there. Uh, what do I want? I would like to use that one I think. Yes, let's use that one. So this fursuit I'm editing photos for right now was the previous pre-made that I did. I will probably be making something with more conventional fursuit eyes as opposed to whatever this thing had. <laughs> and I'm probably going to be making some kind of a dog or something. Just, you know, easy to make will sell easily as well. <laughs> Maybe I'll also include a what the vision is like one. Spot 10. Alright, those are those photos done. And, um, you know, I haven't even started editing the last vlog yet. I really shouldn't be doing another one. Anyway, I just posted out my Phantasmagoria form today, and then I will be doing a bunch of con preparation for the next few months. So. Exciting! So, um, quick warning, look away if you don't like bugs and spiders, but for Phantasmagoria, I have pinned a whole bunch of bugs. This took me like an hour, <laughs> maybe a couple couple hours. Anyway, um, they're not all in brilliant condition. Some of them are missing some legs. Uh, this one I'm really proud of though, this tiny little spider. Look, look how tiny he is. He's so small. <laughs> um, but yeah, some of them are missing some legs. I mean, this guy in the middle here, he was missing like half of his legs. And I was like, well, he doesn't look very good because his legs are really long. So I, I felt so bad, but I just pulled them all off. <laughs> so it was a bit more even. But anyway, those are the bugs. I'll um, probably put them in like little frames or something. I'll make them into jewellery. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. But yeah, those are the bugs. And then also, I found in one of my trinket boxes. <laughs> I found some mice that I've done like a couple of years ago and today I washed them with some dish soap and I brushed them out with a toothbrush. This is Bryden's toothbrush but don't tell him that. <laughs> I'm joking, he knows. Um, he's not going to use that toothbrush anymore. But anyway, um, I just, you know, washed them, brushed them out, hair dried them and now they are nice and fluffy. I'm probably going to keep this one. I like this one. Uh, this one's my favourite, <laughs> but these two I will use as stock, and I'm going to make some more of these as well. So yes, these are done with... Um, how did I do these again? I think they're a mixture of leaving the skull inside the head and then padding it out with Miller putt, which is like a epoxy putty thing. So yes, that's how I made these. I'm going to go and do some more of these today, I think. So exciting! Oh, also, I'm confirmed to have a table at Phantasmagoria. I am going, <laughs> so that's exciting and a little bit uh, anxiety inducing, but you know, it's exciting. Also, my desk is horrendously messy right now. Um, I'll, I'll clean it at some point. <laughs> well, I prepared three more mouse heads and uh, there's all of the limbs that I'll just put in like a little glass jar as like a necklace type thing, I guess. Anyway, the three heads are done. They are currently in the process of drying because <laughs> I just did them and after they've dried I'll be able to fluff up the fur and make it all nice and you know more like <sighs> stretching more like these ones where they're all you know nice and fluffy. So yes that's what I have been doing all afternoon. <laughs> now I have to go and do an art commission. Oh they're having a stare down in the yard. These are not our cats. I think that's the neighbour's cat and then the village calico. Because we don't know who owns it and it keeps coming round. It loves people. And we keep feeding it some beef. 
and those two do not like each other. So I'm, I'm gonna sit and watch, see what happens, and go out and intervene if I have to, I guess. So, uh, I can't remember if I even said, but I did make a Buckethead base. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I said that, but anyway, there's my Buckethead base in its uh, scruffy looking... Yeah, anyway, so today I want to get the muzzle and you know, just, just the whole like foam base done, if I can. And I want to do an experiment. I want to see what it's like to use one inch foam to do the um, like the bulk of the cheek. Because normally I just layer half inch foam to make it one inch. But anyway, um, I thought, why don't I just use this one inch foam? This foam is a lower density than my normal stuff. It's not high density foam. This is like low density, I guess. Anyway. Uh, I got this by accident, they sent me the wrong thing, so... <laughs> and I was like, well, I can't be bothered to, you know, go through sending it back and having a new one, so I, like, oh, I, just, I just kept it. Um, this was during the foam shortages as well, so I wasn't sure if they even had what I wanted in stock. But we'll see what it's like. It feels much softer than uh, high-density foam. It doesn't feel any less durable. I can't... Well, I can rip it, but it takes strength. So, yeah, we'll just see what it's like. Well, surprisingly, I got pretty much the whole head base done today. Uh, I just need to add on some little spikies at the cheeks, but it is done. I do my ears afterwards, so don't need to worry about that. But yes, it is done. The muzzle is literally just like a flat, flat top box. <laughs> I might add some more shape to it, but I'm not sure, because I do quite like how stylized it is right now. So yes, head. And all of the cleaning up I still have to do. Well, I just went to a car boot sale. Uh, this came in the post as well, but we'll look at that in a s- no, we'll look at this first. So um, if you know me, I love Yu-Gi-Oh! and I've been wanting to read the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga for a while, but I want the physical book. Here it is, but have you noticed anything a bit strange because I'm in England? That's in Euros. <laughs> and the book is in German. But lucky for me, I speak German. So uh, this was £5, like £5.99. And I was like, well, the English one's like £60. <laughs> Just get it, in, get it in German. The pictures are the same. The text is readable for me. So <laughs> yeah, it, it helps to know a second language. Anyway. The car boot sale stuff. Uh, first of all, I've got the Headless Headmistress's horse from Monster High. I got it for a pound, so I was like, mm, sure, why not? Anyway, then, I was chatting with this lady, lovely lady, here is her business card. Uh, go and have a little look. She does quilts, and uh, she had aprons there. I almost bought one, but I was running out of change and cash, so I didn't. <laughs> but she cut me a wonderful deal on all of this thread. <laughs> I counted, there's a hundred and three spools in here and she gave me it for ten pounds. I was like, sure. <laughs> Not all of it is um, usable for fursuits, but there's tons of old threads. This one's ancient. They're not, they're not ancient, but you know, this is old. Uh, there's some Gutermans in here, some modern go 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 Gutermans as well. So this is all stuff I can use, even if I'm using this for like test pieces, you know, then I don't have to use my good threads. So yes, uh, thank you so much if you're watching this. <laughs> 103 spools of thread. Uh, what happened was she bought this lot on eBay, took out the metallic threads that she wanted, and then had this. So just thank you so much for that. Thank you. <laughs> I, I love this one. This, one. this one's too pretty to use. I love this red one. Anyway, there's my little update. I've got a book to read and thread to use. It's time to unpin the bugs, which means removing all of the pins and putting them back in. You know, I used to have a like a hundred pins of size twos, and for some reason they've all disappeared. I don't have any size twos anymore. I think what happened was just over the years, I used them in a taxidermy to hold taxidermy together and then they got stuck in some millipert or whatever and slowly but surely I ran out of size twos. <laughs> but 
I do have these size zeros, which are pretty much the same thing. A little bit thinner, but they do the job. There we go. All three of their pins. I think my favourite is this bug. I like this beetle. My camera won't focus on them, but I like the beetle because pinning beetle wings is difficult sometimes. So there's all the bugs. My favourite is this beetle because his wings are pinned out and uh, he was a little bit of a pain to get done, but I do like them all. I will figure out how I want to present them and then sell them at Phantasmagoria. Well, I just put on these little cheek spikes and a nose. I also uh, took off a little bit on these harsh edges and I guess now I shall line the fursuit and uh, think about what fabrics I want to buy. Today I'm still waiting for fabric to arrive but I did put all of the mice on the little plaques and I think I'm gonna make a few more after. What is that? Oh, there's some, some dirt on him. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I think I'll get some more mice from the pet shop. Uh, frozen, frozen thawed mice. Uh, dead already. Snake food. I think I'll get some more and then do some more of these little plaques because I think those might, might be popular at my table, so I will make some more. Also, they're kind of quick to make as well. <laughs> I'm currently drawing a uh, Yugi in the style of the manga. Uh, give or take a little bit, mostly in the style of the manga. I even used dip pens. I used a dip pen and ink to draw this. I'm gonna colour it. Last night I did this, which has some uh, shiny, shiny ink on it. And I really like it, so I was like, oh, let's uh, do a bit more detailed stuff. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to draw his nose in, because uh, if you read the manga, they don't always draw the nose in, because it just adds to the creepiness of him. Oh, I forgot to—I forgot some lines. You need some lines adding here. Oh, and I just cleaned my dip pen as well. <laughs> So I have lined the fursuit head. I could do a tape pattern today, maybe I could maybe do that. Uh, I'm not really sure if it turned out, the base turned out quite how I envisioned it to. It's maybe a little bit different, but it's fine. It, it's a base, it, it'll work, it looks alright. Um, but I can't do anything because my fabric's not here yet. I can't remember if I even showed, but I was thinking of making this design-ish, maybe. But now I'm not so sure. I was thinking that would look pretty good, but I guess I'll see when my black fabric arrives. But now I'm kind of wondering if I should do something more like this with a bit more colour. Well, no, the other one had colours, but you know what I mean. A bit different. Uh, looks more Cha-Chan in a way. I'm not really sure anymore. I'm a bit like, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I want to do coloured Cicleras or not, because it's can be a bit difficult to source the right shades of plastic, otherwise I'll have to paint it myself and do what I did for my lion fursuit, if you watch that vlog. Did I vlog? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I vlogged that one. Anyway, wondering about my design choices, I'm struggling a bit. Well, I had another rethink and I have designed this, which looks pretty similar to my first pass, but a little bit different. I think it's going to be like um, poker themed ish, you know, like cards with the the little the diamond and the the spades, and then uh, I thought maybe I could make a little crown for it, and then on the other side we can have the heart and the club. And I think I like this design more than the other designs. Maybe it's more what I was originally thinking of making, so I guess I'll make this, because it's not too detailed, and I guess I need to make a tail design now, and maybe some interesting paws as well? I'm not sure, we'll see. We will see. So the fabric has arrived, well this is the black fabric, I just placed an order for, um, what should we call it, red and white fabrics as well, both cuddle fleece. Because I have finalised the design, I'm out of breath because I just ran up the stairs. <laughs> I 
ran down the stairs to get the door, went to the front door, and then I was like, oh no, he's at the back door, so I ran to the back door. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so a lot of running around the house, but I have my fabric. It feels like a bit of a different texture than normal, but it should be fine. It's nice and soft. It will do the job. And here is the finalised-ish design. I'm thinking a playing card themed wolf or dog thing. It can be whatever species the owner decides. Uh, it's designed to sell well, I'm gonna admit. My past couple of pre-mates have been very unique. <laughs> it's been a monkey and then that dog thing, thingy thing, that was like with cartoon eyes. Anyway, um, this is designed to be generic-ish but unique enough to sell well. <laughs> So yes, I do actually really like it though. It took me quite a bit of um, fidgeting, fiddling with the design to get it to somewhere that I actually did like it. So here it is. I'm also running a sale on the Devil Tales. Um, all of these are discounted. They're probably sold by the time this vlog goes up, but they are discounted and I'm trying to get rid of them. I I'd like some uh, to recuperate some funds because I paid my national insurance and uh, that cleared me out of it. <laughs> Today I did the tape pattern and I'm doing something a bit different with this one. I decided to only tape up half of the forehead and see if I can just flip this. Um, we'll see if it works. <laughs> I also stuck in the mouth lining. I haven't sewn it up yet so it's all raw fabric back there but it's stuck in. I also went to the post office today because I sold the white devil tail so that is on its way to Canada now. So that's exciting. I still have the two black ones to sell though, so yeah. But this fursuit should be getting its fur, well, its, its minky cuddle fleece on soon enough. I did it. I sewed up the inside of the mouth. And now I can get on to cutting the fur fabric piece, well, not the fur, the blanket fabric pieces and get them stuck on. Ugly stage is here. Well, as you saw, I've cut all of the fabric for the head. Well, most of it, you know, the black pieces at least. And now I'm going to be sewing up the darts on the forehead piece. And then, um, oh, where else had darts? Not many places had darts on this pattern, mostly just the forehead. I think there might be one on the cheek pieces. So I'll do those. Anyway, I have a fun story for you from today, this morning. So first let me say that we do not own a cat, but <laughs> there is a cat that keeps coming round and visiting and coming for attention. So yeah, anyway, so the cat was here this morning. I was still in bed um, and I thought I could hear her downstairs and I could. So then she left, or so we thought, because <laughs> After a while, I'm still in bed, I'm dozing a bit, just barely waking up. And I hear, well, I think I hear meowing, which I do. <laughs> and then I hear my workroom door open. Uh, I don't sleep in my workroom, I have a bedroom. And my workroom, oh, my camera's gonna go flat, I'll finish my story quickly. So I hear my workroom door open, I think, oh, my mum must be in there or something. Then I hear little, like, floorboard creakings <laughs> come into my room and then I hear a little meow and I look up and of course there is a little cat who has managed to get through the kitchen somehow and sneak upstairs and has been wandering around <laughs> doing her own thing so uh, yeah that was um, how a cat accidentally got into my work room and she didn't seem to eat anything or bite or scratch anything I did check the key areas so everything should be fine um, <laughs> but it was just so surreal because uh, everyone thought she was back outside and then she just shows up in well, upstairs so yeah that was how uh, my morning went and there's the cat that was in my workroom this morning she came back because she wanted some ham and I'm almost done editing this video oh and I actually forgot to update you because the camera was flat all of the fur pieces, well, cuddle fleece pieces, have been stuck on. I'm still waiting on my red and my white, but this is all ready to have all of the seams ladder stitched up, so that's exciting. I had to take the day off because wrist pain is pretty bad, but 
I pinned this all together yesterday. I trimmed the excess fabric and pinned it all in place. And I just love the look of black with rainbows. It's just my aesthetic. <laughs> so I'm kind of sad that this is not going to be a sparkle dog. But, you know, if it was a sparkle dog, then I think I'd be tempted to keep it. <laughs> my white cuddle fleece arrived. It feels pretty nice. It, it feels like average cuddle fleece. It's not quite as soft as some of, as some of the other fleeces I use, but it's fine. I also dusted and slightly reshuffled my little shelf here yesterday. It's raining, and look at those pigeons over there. Can you even see them? They're just kind of, kind of sat there in the rain. Oh, look at them. They're all fluffed up. <laughs> I just realised what they're doing. They're having a bath. They're having a shower. Literally a shower in the rain. Look at them. Look. Oh, they're so cute. And there's our resident crow. Another one joins the party. There's three of them now. Oh, they're just so cute. Okay, that's probably enough pigeon content for the video. You know, this suit was going to have muzzle spots, but it occurs to me that muzzle spots might not really work with how I construct my muzzles. I mean, where would I put them? <laughs> like, normally they go here, but this is like a right angle, so... Hmm. I guess no muzzle spots? We will see. It has been a few days. I went to Bryden's. Bryden came here. And I did a bit of work, I did sew up a couple of seams, I think? I'm pretty sure I did. Anyway, so that's progressing. We are getting there. My fabric arrived, I don't know if I said my red fabric arrived. Uh, then I went to Bryden's flat for a few days, and I'm back. <laughs> uh, I can show you what I got, I guess. Uh, well, first of all, something arrived in the post while I was gone, and that is Yu-Gi-Oh! Auf Deutsch. <laughs> German Yu-Gi-Oh! books 2 and 3. These are the um, three-in-one volumes, because I'm, I'm just going to collect these rather than all of the like individual volumes. It's just cheaper, it takes up less space. So, yeah, so I got the next two of those to read. And then I have a bag of a bag of things, so maybe I'll get these out and give you a little uh, show and tell. All right, here's my uh, shopping haul. <laughs> so I got some new trousers because they were cheap. They were 99 pence in the charity shop and they're my size, so that's good. Uh, Bryden spoils me, so he, <laughs> he bought me a, a little Scarbunny plushie. His name is Kettle, like my Scarbunny in my copy of S.H.I.E.L.D., so Scarbunny. Uh, I found this Odie plushie, which I was like, you know, I've got my Garfields that I've uh, got, so I was like, you know, let's get Odie with a pound, so, you know. Anyway, uh, then I got some Schleich animals, because I love to collect these little Schleich animals. I got the baby tapir and little doggy. And then I went to the museum with Bryden today, and they were selling these little trilobites. So I got some little trilobites. Oh, he's rolling away! <laughs> and a piece of fossilised wood. And then also in charity shop, I found these dragons. So here's one of them, and then there was a another one. I thought they were Wade, like Wade Whimsy type, like not Wade Whimsies, but Wade products. But they don't seem to be. I can't find anything online about them, but I like them. I got them, and of course a Wade Whimsy. This is an otter. I love Wade Whimsies. Collect them, love them. So uh, that makes 51 Wade Whimsies in my collection if I've counted correctly. Then I also got this glass box and I bought this so that I could use it at Phantasmagoria. I'm thinking maybe I put some uh, bugs in there and sell it as like a, a thing but Bryden says I have to keep this. <laughs> he says it's too nice to sell and I have to keep it so I guess I have a glass box that I can put my own bugs in. So uh, yes. Anyway then I do have a funny story uh, this over here, I did not buy. Neither of this bought this. Uh, so Bryden ordered some things on Amazon. And he got two packages, which is not what he was expecting. But it was like, okay, maybe it's come in two boxes. Opens one, okay, this is everything I ordered. Opens the other one, and it's just Barbie. It's just a Barbie doll with clothes and wardrobe. <laughs> 
he didn't order it, none of his friends ordered it. It's just a Barbie that he's been sent, addressed to him, but he didn't order it. Someone else has ordered it and it's just been accidentally sent to him. So, I have a, a Barbie to sell, I guess? <laughs> he gave it to me so I can sell it on eBay or something, so yeah, Barbie. And the Barbie was packed with this huge, massive roll of paper. The roll, it wasn't a roll at first, it was just scrunched up, but I was like, that's a lot of paper. So I took it out and unraveled it. It was the length of Bryden's room and then into the corridor. So <laughs> this is so long. So I thought I'd, I'd roll it up and use it myself, maybe for patterning or maybe even just use it to light the fire, you know, live in an old house with real fires to keep it warm in here. But it's summer, so I don't really think that's going to happen. But anyway, free paper. I sewed up the top lip. It's actually quite wonky. <laughs> I didn't realise how wonky it was. Uh, I needed this side to be quite far in because of how I'd done the fabric. It's all very wrinkly inside. This is not my best work, but you know, you can't really tell because this is the same kind of... It's all black. Can't really see it. Well, you can see the wrinkles, but you can't, you can't tell too much that it's not symmetrical. I'll point it out. I might... Did you... Did did deduce, re reduce the price a little bit, depending. I'm not sure how noticeable it's going to be on the finished thing. I'll make sure that the bottom jaw is a bit better than this. <laughs> um, I'm not going to redo it. This is a pre-made. I can price it accordingly. Uh, yeah. If it was a commission, I'd redo this because I'm not happy with it, but my wrist hurts and I want to get this done. So it'll just be a little bit wonky and that's fine. I have sewn up all of the seams on the head. Uh, I don't know what to do about this uh, loose bit of fabric. <laughs> I think I'll be able to cover it with the hair tuft. I'll fix it. I will fix it. Um, but the rest of the head is looking fine. It's nice and smooth. Now I think I'm going to do the nose next. Get the nose on and then make an eye template and ear template things. So that's where we are with that. Yeah, no, that, that's all I had to say. That big box of miscellaneous threads uh, that I purchased is coming in handy. Got a Guterman red, and I am going to sew up the nose. Not me sewing all confidently, like, oh, look at me getting my... I didn't even sew up the dart, but that's the dart. That's the edge of the nose. <laughs> Stupid mistake. I have to pick this seam now. <laughs> the nose is glued down and all pinned around the edges. Next up, sewing. I think I'm going to use black thread because it'll hopefully hide the stitches a bit better than red thread would. Anyway, there it is. Today I finished up sewing the nose down and then I made all these little paper patterns. So um, There's a couple on that side too. But that's where we are. I don't know if I like this eye shape. I might redo it. Um, but overall, that's kind of what we're aiming for, <laughs> so <laughs> people seem to really like this design, but every time I say that, it ends up not selling easily, and I really want this to sell quickly. That That's that's the goal with this one, get it done quick, get it sold quick. <laughs> that's how I should be running my business, but, you know, due to wrist injuries and pain, it has not been like that. <laughs> but yeah. Hopefully I'll get this done soon. I need to fix this eye shape. I don't really like it. Um, but overall, I'm liking how it's going. People on the internet seem to like it too. We'll see what happens. Today, I had to buy new pen nibs for my very, very outdated, no longer in production Wacom Bamboo. Uh, I thought it was only gonna be like £3.29, but then the postage, the postage was £4.99. And I'm like, okay. Okay, but anyway, I bought them anyway because I need them. Uh, I'm on my last good pen nib. For the past 10 years I've been using this tablet and I've only changed the nib. This is the fourth time. This is the fourth pen nib I've used. This is the last one I've got. So, some of them look okay in the pack actually, but, you know, I, it's time to order some more. <laughs> I hope they work. We'll see when they arrive. I probably won't even try using them for like another five years but it, it's fine I've, I've got them oh they're on the way anyway this is my tablet um here he is it's my wacom bamboo and uh i've been using him for 10 years yeah i went shopping 
uh, mostly to find cosplay things, but I didn't find anything for my cosplay, but I did find some things anyway, so uh, I found this little Monster High bag, which I know it looks kiddie, but you know what I'm like. I, <laughs> I wear all kinds of rainbowy things. So I thought this would be good for when I just want to carry like a couple of things with me, like my wallet and my phone, sketchbook, rather than lug this big thing around. <laughs> Uh, then there's all my receipts, so get rid of those. Uh, then I got the pack of Pokemon cards from the local little comic book anime manga shop, um, independently run, so I was like, let's, let's buy some Pokemon cards. <laughs> and I got a couple of these shirts because they were really neon and colourful. I saw these in the charity shop for £2 each and I was like, sure, why not? And they look pretty much the same until you unfurl them out. They have different designs on them. This one has some little animals on it. This one has an elephant on it. Uh, they're just slightly different, so I got two of them. So there's my little haul. Not much. I didn't find any cosplay materials, which is sad. But you know, I got a couple new shirts, got a bag, and some cards. My desk is so messy right now. It is just... It's horrible. I need to clean it. But anyway, aside from my desk being horrendous, I have three more things for my table at Phantasmagoria. I ordered ten of these acrylic charms of Sawbones. This has been a popular design for years, um, so I'll, I've made some little acrylic keychains. So nothing, nothing fancy, they're just single-sided. They were cheap, so I've got ten of those. Uh, I also ordered some Lampton Worm stickers, because I did this for a zine I was in um, a while back. So I got those as stickers, and I also got my goth unicorn, my spooky unicorn sticker as, well, a sticker. So those are for my table. Uh, I did also get some other things for my table, let me show you. Oops. <sighs> so I was over at Bryden's house uh, for like six days, I went over for a while. Uh, this belt I got for my Yugi cosplay, I found it in a charity shop. I'm going to cut it down so it will be a, a choker necklace. So, yeah, there's my Yugi cosplay accessory. But anyway, I got these two trays. Uh, first of all, I got this one. I saw this and I'm like, oh, maybe I'll put stickers in there for my table. I was like, it's a bit ugly, but you know, it'll do the job. And then I went in the second charity shop of the day and I found a better one. So I ended up with two. Um, they were cheap, so I was like, you know, let's get them. I'm going to use this one definitely. I don't know if I'll use the other one. I could use this one if I, like, stand it up and, like, tie things to it, maybe. I'm not sure. But I have them, and I will use them, so that's what I got for my table. Also, Bryden got me some things when he went to Alton Towers for the week. Um, like, the, the week before, obviously, I didn't go to Alton Towers. He got me some mochi, um, they're pretty tasty. And he also got me ugh, a little pin badge for my eater bag. So, yeah, there's some things that I've gotten. <laughs> Today I need to package up Barbie and get it posted because it has sold on eBay. I might put in a, a Pinkie Pie sticker, just a little, little freebie extra. And also we're going to continue on with this. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to change the eye shape or not now because at first I was like, oh, the eye shape's kind of bad, but honestly it didn't look too bad. Uh, maybe I'll do a couple of different ones, see what it looks like, make sure they look good when it's flipped as well. <laughs> and uh, then I guess I'll just see how far along I get, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure if I want to do ears next or like face details because sometimes if you do the face details first the ears can be different. I, I don't know how to explain my process but <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I might do some eye experimentation today. Also, this weekend, yeah, yeah, this week, this weekend, I was thinking next weekend, but no, it is this weekend. I'm planning to go to Middlesbrough Fur Meet, which is the closest fur meet to me, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, there's like the Middlesbrough one, there's the Newcastle one, those are two fur meets that are close by, but Newcastle from here is a nightmare to get to. The train is like £30, I'm like, why is it that much? It's not that much further away than Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough's only like £5 with the rail card, so anyway, point is, horrifically expensive to get to Newcastle, but it's cheap enough to get to Middlesbrough. Uh, also, I might get driven there if I'm lucky. <laughs> anyway, point is, I'm going to Middlesbrough Fur Meet, my first ever furry event. I'm a little bit nervous, I've never done anything furry meat related, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I'm not sure which fursuit to take. I was thinking Triceratops because he is my 
like my fursona, he's my most used personal suit, but he's also getting a bit fragile now, so I don't want to take him outside. Uh, not going to take Cotton Flop because she's old. <laughs> she's much more durable and high quality than Triceratops, but still. I'm probably going to take Jester because he's my most recent personal suit. He's compact, <laughs> easy to transport, and uh, he shows my current quality of fursuits, so... Anyway, that's my thoughts on the Middles Prefer Me. I will let you know how that goes in a couple of days. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous, as I have already said, but uh, Bryden's going to be with me as my handler, bodyguard, friend, but well, he's my boyfriend, you know? <laughs> anyway, so uh, yes, that's my little story about going to Middles Prefer Me, which is in a couple of days. If I go, hopefully I do go. I'm nervous. I am not looking forward to cutting these out. <laughs> It's really tough on my wrists. Uh, after I cut them out, then I have to use the drill with the grinding disc thingy thing on it to um, like smooth out the edges and the eyes. It's a process, and it takes a while, and it's very hard on the wrists, but has to be done. Also, this was like the last of my plastic, so yeah. It's going to be really difficult getting these cut out properly, uh, like shaving it down. It's going to be a nightmare. I wish I had some thinner plastic, but I only have, um, what is this, 0.5 of a millimetre or something? One, no, this is one millimetre plastic. It's quite thick. <laughs> I started cutting, but I forgot to add my little, I forgot to add my little, um, what do you call it, like a seam allowance thing for the eyelashes, so I should add it definitely over here. If, if I can, I can probably add like a couple of millimetres. Oh, I forgot that it on this side. No! Oh, it's fine. It'll be alright. It'll be alright back here because there is a lot of white space there. Um, but definitely need some seam allowance over here. Oh, my camera's gonna go flat. I should charge it. The eyes I cut out. I cut out the uh, main eye and then I got my dad to <laughs> cut out this part for me. Just roughly. These are just roughly cut out. Uh, I'll file these down tomorrow, probably, because, you know, there's obviously this is all rough and horrible. That looks absolutely disgusting. You would not want that on a suit. It's not very good. So I will file this down, make it nice tomorrow. For now, uh, I'm gonna go and do something else for the rest of the day because that really took it out of my wrist. Well, today I was going to start making like the ear and the... Uh, both ears. <laughs> Just one ear, wow. I was gonna make both ears and stuff, but I can't... I don't like to make the ears until I've got the eye stuck on, just in case anything's looking a bit iffy proportions. I'd ideally like to get the eyebrows on as well before getting the ears on. Uh, kind of, I'm not really sure, it's all just make it up as you go along. Point is, need the eyes on, but can't because I have not finished the eyes. Let's walk along here. Um, where are they? Here they are. Yeah, they're still um, not done yet because I need the drill with the grindy singy thing on it and uh, my little wrists are too weak to, <laughs> to get the grinding disc on the drill it yeah yeah point is I need to wait for my dad to come back because I have the little stick arms and wrists and I can't do it myself <laughs> but I did do something else today I did this which is the a necklace choker for my Yugi cosplay and I've only punished one hole in it because the holes are kind of messy so yeah I measured it using my um, my regular regular wear spiky choker I uh, probably could have done this hole a little bit further in than I do on this but so this is a bit loose on my neck <laughs> but I'd rather have it be a bit loose and comfortable to wear because I am gonna be wearing the um, Kigurumi mask that I'm making, so I'd rather it be more comfortable to wear than look better, you, you know, it's better for it to be more comfortable than look brilliant, because, you know, comfort comes before looking good in these kind of really hot outfits that you're going to be wearing for hours at a time. <laughs> well, I went to Middlesbrough for the fur meet and it was really fun. Uh, I met what, 14 of the furries or something? I can't remember how many. There were 15 people there, so 13 of the furries. And then uh, Bryden came with me just to be, like, there, you know. <laughs> um, 
But no, it's really fun. There were two other fursuiters, and we did a little fursuit walk with the photo shoot. It was really fun. I probably put some pictures on screen while I was talking just then. But anyway, so I just came back today, and on the way back, we picked up my Yugi face. This is the Yugi sculpt that I did. And uh, it's printed in black because I just said use whatever colour you have in the printer. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to paint it anyway. Probably should have printed it in white, but you know, it doesn't really matter. going to paint it. I think it, it's going to require a lot of sanding and patching up to get a smooth surface, but that's alright. I was expecting that. I'm also going to have to drill out this uh, mouth section. I'm not sure how I'm going to get that out, but then... Um, I'll figure it out. But yeah, um, this is much more sturdy than I was expecting, which is really good. It's going to be a lot of work. <laughs> but on the topic of my Yugi cosplay, so here's the face. I love how it turned out. So there's the face. Then, while I'm in Middlesbrough, oh, I found this spirit plushie. And um, I bought it for 50 pence. So I say I bought it. Bryden bought it for me. <laughs> um, Turns out on eBay they're gone for like £30, so I may as well sell him. I would would probably enjoy the £30 more than I would enjoy the horse, so I'll probably sell him. Anyway, um, <laughs> I got two belts for like £2.50 each in home bargains, which is really cheap. Like, that's cheap for a belt. I got them because I found this coat. And I found this coat that works really well for a Yugi cosplay if I redo the lining so I bought a white silk fabric to redo this lining and um, you know modify the collar and stuff so it looks more like Yugi's school coat. These belts are for the sleeves or go around the around the sleeves. So yes, coat. Um, I took this with me when I went to the fur meet. I wore this on the first suit walk with Jester. Um, that's a plushie I own. <laughs> anyway, and my Millennium Puzzle has finally arrived in a very bashed box. I was expecting the bashed box. I was not expecting the authentication, authentic, authenticity sticker. So it is an official product. And let me show you what it looks like inside. If I can even get in there. Ooh. Okay, there we go. It is layers upon layers of little plastic bits that you have to put together yourself. Look at all that. <laughs> I could do a video of, like, constructing it, but I don't think I want to. I think I want to do this, just do this in my own time, not have the camera in my face, you know? Or maybe I'll construct it and I could maybe solve the puzzle on film. I probably won't, I'll probably just do this in my own time. But yes, here it is. Official Bandai model kit. And I'm really excited to do this. I bought this from AliExpress, so I knew it was official from the reviews. But I was a little bit nervous. <laughs> um, I got this really cheap as well, considering the aftermarket price for it. I'll put the lid on back later. Anyway, yes, I'm back. And now I should probably, tomorrow, get on with that suit over there. That's going to be fun. Oh yeah, I can do the eyes. I'll do the eyes tomorrow. Wait, I can't do the eyes tomorrow because I have an appointment. So um, I'll do them the next day. Today I'm working on painting the eye mesh. I've done one pupil. I have to wait for my template to dry before I can do the other one so I can flip it over. I mean, it, it's just like a semi, a semicircle, a, an oval. <laughs> it's an oval shape. It's pretty symmetrical, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. Anyway, um, once this white base layer is dry, I will paint it gold with my Fintech gold paints. I won't need a template for that, I don't think. I'll just use a brush. But anyway, yes, uh, I'm painting eye mesh for the second time. I don't paint eye mesh very often. Anyway, something else that I could update you on is that I got my first ever... Oops, kicking things over. I need to clean my floor. I got my first ever Gundam. Um, it's just a little one. It was cheap. I was in York yesterday, so while I was there, we went to a traveling man, and this guy was just on the shelf, and I was like, he looks kind of fun to build, and he looks pretty somewhat easy to put together. Let me try and open the box one-handed. Oh. There we go. Uh, he didn't have too many parts. He's got stickers and a few layers of plastic, so yes, I will build him probably today, maybe. So I just spent the time uh, painting the white circles. 
But what they should have done first was test that the gold actually just worked straight on the black because it looks so much better just straight on the black than it does on the white. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I could finish these and use them in something else, but I'll probably just scrap this and um, redo it with just gold. So, yes. Okay, well, I had to scrap that because um, it just wasn't really working. I might finish it up later, use it for a different project, who knows. Um, but I redid it with just gold paint instead of using the white, and it looks much better. Uh, I guess I should spray this with sealant now, and that is the eyes almost done. After that, I'll glue them in. Anyway, uh, another day. Blah, 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 blah. Another thing <laughs> that I did today was I built my first Gunpla, or Gundam. Um, this is a Bandai one, and he was... I was in York the other day. I, I'm pretty sure I said it was in York. I bought this. I'm pretty sure I just showed it. But anyway, I built it, and it was really fun. It took me just over an hour, so pretty easy to do. Uh, I was going to paint all the gold details, but I was like, you know, I can't be bothered let's just use the stickers because I want to just relax and do this quick little project so I used the stickers they're a little bit wonky but honestly I'm really happy with him look at look at him he's a little guy and he was really fun to build he was fun and easy to build and unfortunately I really enjoyed it which means I'll want to build more so um yeah that's a dangerous hobby to get into for my bank account <laughs> let the sealant dry overnight. It kind of dulls the shiny effect, but you know, it's still it's still shiny gold, just not quite as shiny glistening as before. Not first it work, but uh, I made a start on my Millennium Puzzle Bandai kit today. Whoever said that this was a beginner-friendly kit? No, it's not. <laughs> just, I, I don't recommend doing this as your first kit. It, this is my second kit, don't do it as your first. Some of these pieces don't fit together very easily. Some of these are a nightmare to get together. Uh, it could just be my kit being a bit difficult, but I'm setting aside pieces that I want to finish pressing together later because they're just so difficult. I might get someone else to do it for me because they're so stiff. They are so finicky. Um, I'm, I'm having fun, but it's also really difficult. The instructions are clear, which is nice, but if you're going to build something like this, a model kit, get a little, like, Sinanju there. That was my first model kit, and he was really easy to build. So if you want your first experience to be fun, get get a little Gundam first, um, and then move on to the Millennium Puzzle. I mean, this thing's expensive, too. I would have thought it would be a little bit easier to put together. Yeah. <laughs> okay, rant over. I am having fun. I am enjoying it, but it's a little bit... It's fun, but it's also a little bit stressful, but yeah, I've got through two of the layers in the box. I've got three more to go, and then I'll have to solve the puzzle. There's no instructions to put the actual puzzle together, so that's going to be fun and interesting. You know, I did quite a bit today, considering that we're working on eyes, and I just put contact cement on the eyelashes, and that's drying, but uh, I cleaned my room. Look, the floor is clean. Ignore the empty bag on the floor. I need to write down the name of the business company so I can order more of that because it was tasty. It's mochi from the royal family mochi company thing. Anyway, that's tasty. Um, I finished my Millennium Puzzle. Here it is. It's in focus. Here's my Millennium Puzzle. I'm going to use this with my Yugi cosplay when I eventually get that made. So there's one thing off my to-do list. It was really fun to build. Uh, like stressful, it's not not stressful, infuriating is the word. <laughs> it was a little bit difficult at some points, but I got there in the end. It is quite a difficult puzzle, um, but it was really fun, really challenging, and I had a lot of fun building it. it. It filled in two afternoons for me over this weekend, so there it is. Anyway, uh, I'll show you the fursuit. Here's the fursuit. <laughs> the eyes are not uh, so so not glued on yet. Uh, this is the protective plastic if you're wondering what the wrinkles are, it's just protective plastic. Um, so yes, I sealed the paint on the eyes last night. Was it last night? The night before? Can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> I need to put some more glue on the back just to make sure it's really secure. It's, it's super glued on so it should be nice and secure as is but I'll 
do a bit more. You won't be able to see that gold paint on the inside once uh, this is on the head. Shouldn't matter. But, uh, yes. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. I just need to add the eyelashes to these and then glue them on. I might have made them a little bit too big, but that's alright. They're going to be a bit difficult to get flat on the head. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I did today. Cleaned my room, did some work on the eyes, and built the Millennium Puzzle. Today I am sewing up the ears. Uh, that That's all I have to say, really. My drill went flat in the middle of drilling a hole in Yugi. And uh, the problem is, 3D printed plastic melts when you drill it which means that the plastic melts onto the drill bit thingy and um, now I can't pull the drill out so <laughs> it's stuck like this until my Dremel charges and I can't get it out so that's annoying but I am working on uh, you can't really see but they've turned the exposure up maybe you can see then uh, not really well, what I am doing is I'm drilling a bunch of holes around Yugi's mouth so then I can, like, perforate it, basically, and pop it out. Well, it'll be a struggle, but I'll get it out this way. Hopefully, maybe, touch wood. Is there any wood I can touch here? Uh, my desk. <laughs> yeah, so that's the plan. Well, I can report on two things. First of all, my Yugi cosplay bracelet thingies arrived. They're obviously not the same as what Yugi has in the show. I could not be bothered to make them, so I just ordered something somewhat similar, but I can wear these anyway, just in general. Anyway, so there's those. Uh, and then I got this because uh, it was cute, it was cheap, it was cute. Um, it's like a bootleg version of the Beast Box dinosaurs. I don't like to buy bootlegs, but uh, it, it's been ages and I just cannot find the beast boxes in the UK or anywhere reasonable so <laughs> yeah I got one of them but I also got one for my friend as well I got my friend this yellow one so I will give that to them when I see them so yes now we both have a dinosaur uh, it was like a oh I can buy one for my friend and I can uh, buy one for myself at the same time <laughs> but anyway so those are the things that arrived today then last night I continued drilling all of these holes. If I hold up to the light you can see. Um, and then today I guess the job will be to try and get this out and then clean it up because it is going to be horribly messy. But yes, uh, 3D plastic does melt when you drill into it because it gets too hot. You know, the friction heats it up and melts. Uh, I still need to clean off this drill bit. Uh, is that the word for it? Like is that is that what you would call a drill bit? I don't know. Um, <laughs> but the way I've been doing that is just scraping it off with a scalpel, craft knife, same thing, and using the little nippers, clippers, for really tough bits. So yes, that's the plan today. Oh, and also sewing up that ear. It's under there just to hold its shape. So, yeah. Oh, blurry. Let's get that in focus. <laughs> Anyway, today's progress. I've almost finished this ear. I'll probably finish it up tomorrow just because it's been a strenuous wrist day, I guess. Well, they they hurt, basically. Anyway, so this is almost done. Just have this little bit here and then the bottom seam to do and then it goes on the head. The other thing that I was doing today was Yugi's face, but um, that's come to a halt because uh, <laughs> the um, the drill bit is stuck in his face. That That's not budging. That is not budging. Uh, when I attach it to the, the Dremel drill, this bit moves, th this bit spins just fine. That don't know. And it's leaving little metal shavings on Yugi's face. So <laughs> I think um, we're going to have to sort that out tomorrow. So uh, yeah. But I did make some good progress and kind of see how far around I've got with cutting that out. I was hoping to finish it today, but uh, that's um, that's not happening. So tomorrow we might get that done. Maybe, if we're lucky. Yeah, this only happened because the drill went flat mid-drilling, so... Yeah, if you're going to be doing this, don't, because it, it's 
really difficult, but also make sure your drill is fully charged. Uh, yeah, that, that's my advice. Make sure your drill's fully charged. <laughs> we can see I've pinned on one of the ears and it's looking pretty good. So uh, now I just, just have to finish up the other ear and then we'll be doing eyebrows, I guess, and a tongue. Yeah, shouldn't be too long before the head is finished, maybe. But uh, that, that's where we are with the fursuit. It is currently the weekend, so I'm not working on the fursuit, but I just wanted to show you this doodle page that I did, because I really like how it turned out. <laughs> um, I've been super into Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja again, which, it, if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. It is the best show ever made, in my opinion. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to show you these ninja doodles that I did, because I really like them. It only took me three days, but <laughs> I finally cut out the mouthpiece. Now I can replace this with mesh. Well, not not yet, obviously. I have to neaten it up. It's a bit rough around the edges, so I'm going to take another drill bit and sand this all down, neaten it up. Then I'll wash the mask with some soap and water. Then I can spray it with my um, heavy body primer and then smooth the surface and paint it anyways. Yeah, we're getting there. We are getting there. Well, it's been a couple of days since I've showed any progress, and here's what we're looking like today. I've sewn up the four teeth, I've sewn up the tongue, it's still needs attaching, it's still loose in there. I've cut out all of the little cheek markings, those are going to be really difficult to sew on, especially that one I'm scared for. Uh, the ears well, we already saw the ears are done. I've done a little hair tuft, eyebrows, everything's ready to be sewn on. I still need to make a neck, but, but we'll get there. I've also been working on the crown. Uh, the ears are not sewn on yet, so I'm just paper patterning the crown. I think I like the placement, so I might go ahead and sew those ears on. And uh, yeah, then I'll be making a crown and making a neck, and then the head will be done. And then I have to make paws and a tail, which is going to take... Oh, paws are so time-consuming, I hate making paws, but <laughs> it's an important part of a costume, so it has to be done. Today, so far, I've sewn on two ears. Well, th there is only two ears. Point is, I've sewn the ears on. <laughs> uh, they're not quite symmetrical, there's a little bit of a difference between them, but it's not noticeable, which is fine. So that's okay. Next up, I think I'll sew the eyebrows on, and then all of the face markings. Yeah, well, I just, have to, I just have to sew all the details on. Other things I've been doing, I have been tracing and cutting out the pattern pieces for the lining of my Yugi coat. Though I just, um, I lost my pen I was using to trace with. I put it down on the floor and it vanished. Like, immediately I put it down and it disappeared. Is it under this fabric? No, it's gone. It is vanished. It'll show up eventually, but where did it go? Never mind, I found it. It's one of those friction pens that um, you can erase with, um, whatchamacallit, heat. Yeah. Just got his eyebrows on. They're not quite as good as they could have been. And that doesn't look very good on the camera, but in person it's not quite as bad. Uh, yeah, I'll be able to fix some of this wobbliness by um, picking the seams. These are just ladder sewn on because it's easier than trying to cut sections out of the fabric. You know how most people when they use the faux fur they'll cut the pattern pieces out so it's all touching the foam? That doesn't tend to work for cuddle fleece just due to how the fabric is so I ladder stitch everything on. So yes, eyebrows are on. Maybe I'll do cheek markings next? Maybe. Yeah, it'll probably be smart. Or maybe the teeth. Now we'll do cheek markings next. Today I'm also sanding Yugi uh, I did like five-ish, maybe more, layers of primer spray paint and now I'm sanding it down so you can see it's a bit patchy. So uh, I'll do some more sanding, then I will wash him off, make sure he's not covered in dust, spray him a few times again, then sand again, repeat the process until he's nice and smooth, and then I can paint him. <laughs> so <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there slowly. Here is Yugi after an entire can of the primer and sanding and then one final layer of the primer which was the last of the can. <laughs> I had to order another can of primer 
Um, I probably could have found a cheaper one, but you know, I want to use something that's definitely going to be safe to use the paints and not affect all the chemicals and all that. So uh, yes, I'm waiting for my next can. Here is Yugi. He's getting smoother by the day. <laughs> He's still a bit wrinkly in the forehead, but it's much better than it was. Um, but no, look at that. Not too bad, I would say. Right now, I'm just going to get some clay and uh, just, you know, fix up this mouth area. Uh, maybe the nose as well. Nose might... Eh, no, the nose might be alright. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, there's a couple areas that need some patching up with clay just to smooth it out because I can't just do that with the primer. So that's what we're doing with Yugi. Uh, as for the fursuit up there, not much has happened today. I've taken the day off actually for my wrists, so yeah. I also need to finish cutting these pattern pieces. This has just been on the floor for like a week now. <laughs> Whoopsie. Made a start sewing up all of my pattern pieces that I cut out today. I cut out all of the lining pieces and it's going so well. I was like, oh yay, I've got one side done. No, I've uh, <laughs> I've sewn a little bit into the seam by accident, so I'm going to pick that out. Ah! <laughs> Mistake fixed. I patched up the hole I had to rip into it. Uh, now I get to continue doing this for the other side. I'm so glad I have a sewing machine. It is making this so easy. Well, it, it's going to get more difficult again when I have to put the lining in the coat. Yeah, yeah. While I'm sewing up the, or sewing on I should say, the face markings, the little, little um, playing card symbols. Is there a word for those? I don't know. Anyway, uh, this one's not going so great, but we'll see what it looks like once it's all sewn down. Um, I don't know if I'll redo it. I probably will if it looks really bad. If it looks okay, it'll be fine, but it's not looking great, is it? <laughs> anyway, another thing that I've done is I figured out what was meant to happen with, uh, like, sewing the... I was stuck on this lining for a couple of days. I couldn't figure out how it was meant to go back together, but I figured it out, I think. So now the um, tops of the shoulders, those are sewn together. And next up, it's going to be deciding if I want to add the collar piece, this piece, onto the lining, or if I want to do that afterwards. So I'm not sure yet. I've got two blue threads to choose between. I mean, they're exactly the same, really. I mean, look at them, they're pretty much the same. Don't think it really matters which one I use. I have ordered some more bobbins for my machine because the Singer being a scammy company, I guess. Not not really, they're not a scammy company, I don't think. But for £250 for my sewing machine, that's what I paid for that. Two bobbins? I got two bobbins with my machine. <laughs> I finally have ordered three more bobbins for like £5, so you know. Uh, yeah. I'm not too happy about having to spend money on bobbins, but I need some so I can use the blue thread, because my two bobbins that I do have are with black and white thread. So, anyway, rambling over, uh, next job on the coat is to figure out how to sew the lining onto the coat, and uh, for the rest of the day I'm going to be working on the fursuit doing the markings on the face. I'm not very good at saying things like this, but I feel like I should put this in the video, especially since I am making a Yugi cosplay, and also Yu-Gi-Oh is one of my favourite things. Unfortunately, a few days ago, Kazuki Takahashi, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh, was announced to have passed away, and uh, it's very, very sad news. Um, I don't want to be too sad in the video, but uh, all I will say is thank you. Thank you, Kazuki Takahashi, for creating one of the most amazing stories and card games with amazing characters and your artwork is incredible. Thank you for creating Yu-Gi-Oh! You will be missed by all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! fans across the world. I got so scared for a second because my little plushie fell off my chair and I looked out and it was stood up. <laughs> no, it, it's not it's not possessed or anything, I don't think. It just uh just propped itself up on a box. So. <laughs> oh, I need to go to bed. 
yesterday I sewed on all of the face markings. So we have this side with the club and the diamond suit. And then on the other side we have the heart and the ace, but the ace looks a bit wonky so I think I'm going to rip it off and redo it because I just... It just didn't look very good, so I'll redo that one. And I also sewed on the hair tuft, so that's on now as well. I sewed it on at, a, at an angle. I normally do, but this one's a little bit more extreme than normal, I think, maybe? I, I don't know. Anyway, if you sew them on at an angle, it means that they work more from more angles. You know, when you look at it from the front, it still looks good. Anyway, today I think I'm going to probably redo that. And maybe also sew the teeth on, maybe the tongue as well. I'm not sure. I'll just see how much I get done today. Uh, I was going to be getting on with my coat over there. Uh, I've pinned or well, clipped the lining in, uh, but I need my bobbins to arrive before I can sew it down because I need to use the blue thread because the stitches are going to be visible. So, yeah, I'm waiting on my bobbins. Well, I had to go to the dentist today, so I didn't actually get much work done. I sewed in a couple of teeth in the fursuit, but that's it. Otherwise, after I went to the dentist, we went into town and I found this fabric, which is actually two pillowcases. I found it in a charity shop for 3 99 And I think it is the perfect fabric to use to make the crown on the fursuit. So, I will uh, chop these pillowcases up make them into a crown. Maybe also for the paw pads I will use this too if I have enough fabric. There might be enough, there might not be, we will see. Uh, other things that I got, ignore the receipts, I got some sewing machine oil because I haven't actually oiled my sewing machine in the two years that I've had it. So <laughs> I don't know if I'm meant to be oiling it or not. Anyway, I got some oil because I thought that would be a smart thing to do and some paint. Oh and I also got uh, there's a little nerd shop that opened recently, so I got some uh, Yu-Gi-Oh pin badges while I was there too. So, yeah. Mostly business purchases though. Currently, I am redoing the uh, ace symbol because the first one I did looked horrendous, so hopefully this one turns out a little bit better. I also had to re-sew the tongue in today because the first time I did it, it was crooked, so uh, I redid that today as well. I'm debating whether or not I want to stitch it down or not, because you can't really wedge it to the side, so I might think about sewing it down. We'll see. We will see. Um, but yes, that's where we are today. It's not perfectly symmetrical, but it's much better than it was before. That is a big improvement. So I think I'm just going to leave it like that, because that looks much better than before. So now this head just needs the neck adding, I think. Is that all that I need to do? Uh, oh, and then I need to make a crown, of course. So that's the next next step. I just cleaned my desk, reshuffled and cleaned my desk. Just just because I was like, well, I guess it's time to. I, <laughs> you know, you just kind of randomly do this occasionally. Anyway, I reshuffled my toys and figures stands a bit. Normally, or usually this one here, the clear one, was here. Uh, and this one did not fit there when that one was there, but they do fit the other way around. So I thought, let's shuffle that. And now I can also fit more anime figures on my desk, whereas before it was like, they were all here. <laughs> but now they're on an actual little stand shelf thing. It's like a kitchen spice rack, but it, it works for this too. Um, I've got a little bit of storage space under the shelves, so that's fun. I was kind of sad that um, now my artwork is a bit covered, but you know, it's fine. I now have some blank space to fill in there, so I could put some more artwork there maybe. Uh, now I have a little dinosaur on my uh, monitor, which is fun. And I moved my keychains here. So this will not stay clean for very long, let's be real. <laughs> But it's nice now that it's reshuffled, at least for maybe a week, when it will be nice and clean. Well, my desk did not stay clean for very long. <laughs> okay, it's different because I'm actually doing the project thing, I'm customising dolls. Anyway, my bobbins arrived, that's what I was really filming to tell you. Yay, my bobbins arrived. 
Now I can wind one of them with blue thread and sew up my Yugi jacket. Today I sewed up one half of the neck and then, well actually the first half I did, I messed up so badly that I had to unpick all the seams, um, but the second half is fine, but I unpicked the seams on the other half and I couldn't be bothered to finish that today, so there's where we are with that. I also cleaned the floor and hoovered, but now it's covered in black fluff from cutting the black fabric, which kind of sucks, but you know, there we are. Uh, otherwise, other thing, it is currently the weekend, so I don't have to work. Anyway, I've been working on my doll customization thing. I started this doll ages ago, and I just finished her face off today. Like, I glossed her eyes and stuff like that. She's a vampire. Uh, I think she was a... I want to say she was a spectra, but I don't think she was. Anyway, I'm doing her hair now. I'm using just yarn that I've pulled apart because it's cheaper than buying doll hair. <laughs> um, I'm not actually gluing these in because I already have a head on there. This is my reroute tool, self-made with a needle. And the, it's cut at an angle, you can't even see it's out of focus. And this is Milliput that I've super glued together many times to encase this needle in there. And this is a um, scalpel blade holder. There we go. There's a little uh, hobby thing for you. I don't really post my doll customization. Customization? That's not even a word. Anyway, that's what I did today. I worked on my doll. So today I'm probably going to finish the head. Uh, I have had some wrist pain, so I have been taking quite slow, but uh, the neck is all pinned on. I've sewn up a bit of it. Uh, after that, the head is done, aside from making a crown, which I will do maybe next. I'll, maybe I'll make the crown next. Probably. Then I can see how much fabric I have left over for the paws, if I want to do gold paw pads or not. So yeah, crown is the next order of business. Uh, that's all I have to update you on. That was a nightmare to pin. Well, actually, it went pretty smoothly, so I won't say it was a nightmare. So, um, that was a non-nightmare to pin. It's a, it's a moth. Normally, they're so delicate that they don't have their antennas anymore. And, um, an antenna? What's the plural of, an plural of antenna? I don't know. But anyway, this one has both of its antenna and all of its wings, and I pinned it and it didn't lose any legs either, which is a first. So that's cool. Uh, then I did some flies over here. Uh, the flies, I could not be bothered to pin their legs and everything, so... Yep, there's some bug work for the day. It's so hot today, it's 31 degrees outside. I dread to think what temperature it is in my workroom, but it's, it's warm. So, today my rope arrived from my Yugi cosplay. I got it from here, if you're curious. Um, but this is like a common kind of rope, you can, you can get this anywhere really. But, uh, because this kind of rope unravels easily, I did tie off the ends with some yarn. I also singed the ends so it doesn't fray as much. So yeah, there's my rope. I'll be wearing this with my Millennium Puzzle. It's such a good colour and size for the cosplay as well, I'm really happy with it. Alright, so I'm actually going on holiday in like two, three, three days. Yeah, three days I'm going to Scotland for a few days. Uh, nothing fancy, just like a stay in a cheap hotel for a few days and then come back. <laughs> anyway, um, what can I update you on? Well, I tried Posca pins for the first time. My sister, my twin, bought these to make a Where's Wally cosplay. Uh, she did draw on fabric with a, a paint pen, which I, isn't it, it wasn't exactly the best option, in all honesty, but you know, whatever. Um, anyway, I tried them and I made this little Pichu here, and I think that turned out really cute. Uh, then, otherwise, what else can I update you on? Oh yeah, uh, I got some more uh, mochi. Uh, I ran out of my mochi and I was so sad because it was so tasty, <laughs> so I ordered some more, but to bulk out the order because it was like £4 postage and this was only £4, so I was like, well, if I'm going to order it, Let's order a couple other things as well. So I got some taro mochi and some matcha hello panda. So there's my little shopping spree. Anyway, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, the head is done. Oh, I'm working on a doll custom here. Anyway, uh, the head is done. I don't know if I mentioned that. So now I'm working on the crown. I've cut the foam 
Um, I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work, but <laughs> then I picked all the seams on one of these gold pillowcases. Uh, so now what I have to do is cut fabric. This is good fabric because I can draw on the back of this. Like, I, I can't draw on the back of cuddle fleece, but I can with this stuff, which I'm not really sure what to call it. It's like, uh, I want to say like, it's not velvet. Uh, well, I don't know what you'd call it. It feels nice this way, but it's horrible the other way. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to machine sew up the like length of the crown. Um, well, minus the bottom seam, otherwise how am I going to get it in? <laughs> uh, and then I guess I will hand sew it shut. Uh, I don't want to, <laughs> but I have to. This is my job. And a little update on Yugi here. He is almost ready for paint, I think. Uh, I just finished patching up the back of his ears. I wasn't going to do anything with them. I was going to leave them all rough like they came off the printer. Kind of looked a bit like that. Um, except worse. <laughs> but it was like, no, you are probably going to see the back of his ears sometimes. And it'll look horrible if you do. So I did patch them up. So now they are nice and smooth. Uh, the rest of his face is really smooth. Like, you would not believe how many layers of spraying and sanding this has been. I could probably have done it a bit faster if I'd done my research before I started, but I'm proud of myself for achieving this. <laughs> I'm I'm glad I remembered that thick body primer is a thing. I'd probably go for the um like the cheaper one for like automobiles, cars, that's cheaper and you get more of it um than you do with Mr. Hobby. I think I used a uh, twelve hundred body primer, whatever it's called. Anyway, here he is. He's almost ready for painting. Kind of scared to do the painting because I'm going to have to use a, a brush and sponges and all of that instead of airbrushing because I don't own an airbrush. Not going to buy an airbrush just for one mask. So, wish me luck, I guess. <laughs> oh, I'm scared. So I sewed up the crown and uh, I, I thought that I was going to need a foam base for it and technically it could work but I'm finding that it's looking better and working better with just toy stuffing. So what I'm gonna do before I attempt anything else with foam is I'm gonna well, remove all this stuffing I've just shoved in there. And I'll sew it up, stuff it, and then see how it looks. And if that looks better than the foam, then I'll just use the toy stuffing, which means I've uh, cut this piece for nothing, but you know, I can still use that as scrap pieces or whatever. So um, yeah, I guess I'll work on that now. Alright, I just got back from Scotland. It has been four, five days? Well, I don't know when the last vlog clip was, but I was in Scotland for four days, I think. Anyway, head's done, as I said. Uh, in Scotland, I got these things. <laughs> I'll give you a quick overview. Uh, I got some bismuth, shiny, shiny rock, another shiny rock, more shiny rocks, little armadillo, uh, hematite bracelet, cool jelly cat bat and he zips his wings as you can see I got this in a charity shop so I got those both in a charity shop uh, a nice lady in a in here cauldron corner the little um, trinket guru shop anyway uh, in there nice lady when I bought some instant she was like you look like you like trinkets and then she gave me a bunch of these notebooks and some other things so uh, thank you to the lady in that shop, she was lovely. So there's my Scotland haul. Oh, I also got oh, this black shirt. <laughs> All right, so that's the Scotland little update of the vlog. Two updates for you. One, I got a cactus on my windowsill uh, to help me try and keep this area tidy because it was getting a bit messy. Now all the junk is over there, so maybe it didn't work. Anyway, the other thing I have to tell you is that I got some more pin badges made. Well, these are my first button badges I've had made. These are for my table at Phantasmagoria. We have my pump kaboo design. Is that even focusing? Who knows? And then I made this, like, one that I just dropped. I picked it back up again. <laughs> Can you even see that? It's kind of hard to get it to focus on the contrasting colours. Anyway, this didn't turn out quite as well as I would have liked, but it's a cat. It had like a kind of 3D effect going on, like, you know, the old 
drawings you used to get, the pictures, picture books, and you have the 3D glasses, the blue and the red lenses. That's what that kind of reminded me of, but it didn't turn out quite as well as I would have liked. Anyway, that's the update. Another update is that I am making the paws today, I made the linings. Now I have to cut out all the pattern pieces for making the actual paws themselves. Hate making paws. Hate it so much, there's so many pieces to cut out and... Ugh, I, if you enjoy making paws, I'm jealous of you because I hate it. There's too many pieces to cut out. I could complain about it all day, but then I wouldn't make them. So I need to go and spend all day making them instead. Okay, enough of my rant. <laughs> Back to work! Oh, it took forever, but I cut out all the pattern pieces, well, almost all the pattern pieces. I can do the last bit later. What I need to do is cut out another piece for all the paw pads, like all, all the little toe beans, because I want to stuff them and then sew them on like I normally do. Well, actually, sometimes I ladder stitch them on and then stuff them, but anyway, point is, I want these to be little pillows, like individually, so I think I'll use a scrap type of fabric because you won't see it so I'll go and find a scrap fabric to cut out pattern pieces with anyway and that's where we are today uh, maybe I'll do a bit of sewing today I'm not sure I don't want to overdo it on my wrist so I'll see when I get done all right I just got back from dinosaur day at North Allerton uh, I took Tricerabat of course so I could uh, scare a few small children I didn't mean to scare them but a few children did scream and cry when they saw me <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's not gonna come on, um, but yeah, I went and did that. Most of the children loved it. Just you know, the odd few weren't quite as keen, but so there were some like really like professional grade, high quality, um, like theatre production dinosaurs there. I probably put some on screen, but that's what we went and we saw a couple of those. Didn't stay for too long. It was hot and busy, and it was getting swarmed by children. <laughs> it was. <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, um, enough about Dinosaur Day, there's not much to say. Uh, otherwise, behold, I have big brain. I have put this on the wall without using blue tack. Well, I did use blue tack. I used magnets. Uh, someone on um, the internet, my figure collection, gave me the idea. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to use blue tack in case it damaged the clear files. This is a temporary one. I've got some more clear files coming. There's Yuri on Ice. Had this for years. Anyway, uh, I was scared the blue tack would discolour it over time. Someone said they had like thumbtacks with magnets on, and then I was like, well, I can't put thumbtacks in my stone wall, but I can put magnets on it with blue tack. Look at that. So uh, if you have posters that you don't want to be damaged by blue tack staining, magnets. Who would have thought? Not me, apparently. <laughs> My clear files arrived today, so now I have a Psyche K Gintama crossover file on my wall to store my paper in. I put the magnet on the outside because otherwise it just kind of falls open. Uh, I had the same problem with my last file I had on the wall. But anyway, new clear file. I, I'm so excited about this. I could ramble about it, but I won't because this video is probably really, really, really long already. Today I did... Uh, what did I do? I sewed all of the claws into the top half of the fingers and then I sewed up the fingers on that paw. I was going to do both paws, like sewing up all the fingers, but I thought, no, let's bring it back so I don't strain myself and then I can work tomorrow as well, so there we go. I've also just ordered some um, white primer paint for my UV mask, so that'll be posting out tomorrow, I hope, so yeah. Not much fursuit work to report on, because it's just sewing the paws, but as for my Yugi face, here I have a pan pastel to help boost up the white base coat. The white paint that I got is kind of on the greyish side, so I want to do a layer of this, or maybe a few layers, and then in here I have three kind of skin tone coloured chalk pastels. I might have to mix in some other colours with them, but you know, it, it'll do as a start. We'll see if I bought enough. <laughs> Um, this thing was seven pounds. Look at that. Seven pounds. So expensive. But you know, if it does the job, then it does the job. So there's my update. That's how I'm going to try and colour my um, Yugi face. Once again, we have hit a problem in the Yugi making world. Oh yeah, we haven't actually seen the mask in a while. Here's the mask. Look, it's all smooth and it's now a greyish white. 
it was meant to be a white spray paint that they got, like a it's Mr. Super Clear uh, Mr. Surface of White 1000, which is actually kind of an off off white grey, but e either way, it's all right. Anyway, I've been experimenting a little bit with the pastel method. I did a I did ugh, one pass of this and I went, ah shit, it's still a bit lumpy. So I sanded it again. And uh, then I was like, well, instead of using this first, let's... Oh, there's a hair on it, ew. Um, anyway, uh, it was like, okay, instead of putting this on first, let's see how well it takes the pastels. Keep in mind, I haven't done a spray of Mr. Super Clear, but it's kind of going on a bit too light. It's not building any colour at all. And I did do a layer of Mr. Super Clear for when I did this, but the colour was so faint that it may as well not have been there. So, so, I think my next course of action is going to have to be buying a spray bottle of Tamiya Skin Tone. And it will be a bit orange, but to be honest, this pastel's a bit orange anyway. So, buy the Tamiya spray paint, and then do a couple layers of this to maybe lighten the skin tone, make it less orange, because I have a feeling it's going to be quite orange. Um, I guess that's my next course of action. Fortunately, these were not too expensive. These were like, I got three of these, five pounds. I, I'll use them for something, I guess, maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh, it, this is just a money pit. This is a money pit right here. I've spent about, to be honest, it's not that bad. I've spent like 60 pounds on it so far, maybe-ish. I'm not even sure. Like uh, the, um, paid 20 for the printout and then 30... 45 on spray paint oh yeah so it's adding up it's adding up it's quite expensive to make one of these for your first time um but you know it's a learning experience i'd like to do this as commissions in future maybe but jesus christ is it a lot of work um that's why custom kigus are so expensive because this is the kind of level of work that goes into them anyway that's my rant about how the pastel method is not working as intended. So, I guess I should go and uh, buy some Tamiya spray paint in orangish skin tone and then see what I can do with the Tamiya, not Tamiya, the Pan Pastel pastel. Okay, well that's that rant. Otherwise, what have we got? Well, this is being sewn slowly. We have all the fingers of this paw sewn up. I think the other one as well is also sewn up. Um, so now it's just sewing the fingers onto the paw and all of that. Yugi's coat, I have pinned down the outer white part. And now I need to sew these on and then I just need those little triangles and then we're done. Also, the other day I was, I went to collect my friend from the station. And then while we were in town, we had a little browse around the town because we both needed something for a cosplay each of us and I was very fortunate and I found what I needed which is a belt for my Yugi a second belt because he wears two belts because he's cool <laughs> and I got this cool belt for three pounds fifty like damn that's pretty pretty cheap so nice cool goth belt I'll wear this anyway this isn't just for cosplay because I like to dress kind of cool um yeah then I went to pride with my friend the next day I wore this cool moth cape that I've had sitting around for a couple of years. <laughs> and that's the update for this clip. This this is a long one. This is a four minute rant about this thing and then little other updates. Okay, I'm going to go order my spray paint. Oh, I've already spent £50 on fabric today for my Phantasmagoria table. It's an expensive day. It's a, it's a very expensive day. I'm not happy. This is my to-do list as well. It doesn't all have to be done in a day, but... That's my to-do list. It's got a lot of things on it. <laughs> uh. All right, my Tamiya spray paint has arrived. It is quite orange. I was expecting it. <laughs> um, let me show you that. That is uh, the color of the spray paint. It's um, maybe a little bit more orange in real life. So that's that. Um, hopefully, hopefully, well, first of all, I'm probably going to need to buy a second can because there's not much paint in here. That was a little test I'm doing on that bootleg Nendroid face. 
hopefully I'll be able to lighten the colour to a more, you know, something sort of like these over here with uh, a couple of layers of pastel. Maybe we will we'll try our best. <laughs> Alright, and then also my fabrics arrived. We have black and then this is red, but it's double-sided. It's grey on one side, red on the other. And that's all the parcels. Oh, no, sorry, that's a lie. I did receive one other parcel today. Let me get it. I also received this. <laughs> I was like, I would like to buy myself a little treat because the past week has been a bit stressful, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, um, here is Club Penguin, the DS game. So uh, that was like three pounds, so I got it. And I've been playing a bit of it. It's, it's quite fun. It's very nostalgic. So I'm playing this in my free time now. I've also been brainstorming on Yugi's hair. This is the current blueprint. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know if it's going to work, but we can try. We can try, and I have to worry about that once I've finished making the face, so that'll come later. So I just made a 30 inch tail pattern. This is the pinned fabric that I've cut out and pinned that's ready to go. Here's the pattern I made. You might not notice anything wrong with it at first, but because uh, I didn't, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, but take a look at this pattern instead. Where's the S curve? It's meant to curve like an S. This just curls. Oh, I'm an idiot. I've done a stupid, I've done a silly. It has not been a great crafting day, apparently. Well, this morning was fine, but this afternoon... Uh, well, I'll, I guess I'll sew this up and see how it turns out. It, it might be fine, but I have a feeling we're going to have a, a discount tail. <laughs> Whoopsie! The only other craft thing I've done today is, well, uh, so this is the spray paint. It comes out this colour. It, it is very orange. <laughs> it's orange. So the other thing I've been doing over the past few days really is doing layers of pastel over the top on this boot like an android face. And uh, you know, I think I've got it to a point where I can go, you know, that's a skin tone that's about what I was going for. I'm quite pasty. I want to match to my skin tone. But also if you look at other Yugi figures, they're all varying shades of light peach. So it's finding a skin tone that kind of fits in with his as well. Um, so, I, th I think I'm there. This is layers of white and yellow pan pastel over the top of this horrific orange. I mean, that Amazon review that said GOT JAUNDICE in all capitals. Yeah. Yeah, th this is not the skin tone. Once I've finished my Kigu, I'll probably do like a walkthrough of how I did it. Like, tutorial-esque kind of thing. Because not really enough info out there, so keep an eye out. But to be honest, I might have already done it by this time this vlog goes up. It is disaster after disaster with this tale. To keep things short, because I actually just recorded this clip and it was a two and a half minute rant. <laughs> My machine hates this fabric. It hates it with a passion. It is double-sided neoprene. It's not layered. It, it doesn't have any like spongy foam in between the layers. It's just two layers of fabric glued together pretty much. I have two meters of this stuff and my machine hates it. So on my test runs here I fixed all the tension settings, it was skipping at first and I was like okay the highest tension is getting me the best result. You move over to the machine, you can see I've been trying to sew this over and over again thinking oh I fixed the tension and, and no I hadn't. Um, it just, this is a zigzag stitch would you believe it or not? <laughs> the hell is that? I'm not having a good time with this tail and this fabric. I have two meters of this. What am I going to do with it? I've re-threaded my machine. I've messed with the tension settings and it sews on lycra just fine. There's no problem. So I don't know what to do. I guess I'll do some googling and then um, maybe scream into a pillow for a bit. <laughs> not having a good time with red devil tails. It, uh, yeah, maybe I'll go make some black ones instead, just to 
you know, get something made. So I'm not having a good time. I gave in. I ordered a stretch needle. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really tired now. <laughs> to be honest, I haven't been feeling great for the past couple of days. But uh, now I'm going to do some hand sewing. Probably watch some shows while I work. I'm gonna take it easy. <laughs> I'm so tired right now. <laughs> Alright, things I have accomplished. I have sewn all of these beans up. I now need to sew them onto the paws and then the paws are almost done. Almost. Uh, last night, because I was so frustrated at this, I decided to make a new tail pattern. This is a 30 inch tail. Uh, I just need to finish up the end cap. So this one's almost done. I got this done real fast. Uh, I used my regular non-stretch needle for this, but my stretch needles arrived today and I finished up sewing the red tail. Uh, it still skipped some stitches, so I think it really just is this fabric hates my machine, or my machine hates this fabric. Same thing. So, uh, I finished it up. When I was turning it out, a seam popped because it was very tight. It was, like, you know, really tight to turn this out. So, seam popped, having to sew that up by hand. But you know, we'll get there in the end. I didn't hear any other seams popping as I was turning it out, so that's good. Uh, unfortunately, because this fabric is double-sided, I did not think about this. Can you see these are little white specks? That's the grey side of the fabric showing through, because, you know, just how it is. So that kind of sucks. Uh, it's not too noticeable from a distance, but it's there. I can see it, I know it's there, so I'm not too happy with that. But, you know, we'll get it done. I'll sell this tail for a reduced price because I patterned it wrong. <laughs> uh, but I do also have my new 30 inch devil tail pattern, which I can make another one of these with. So there's the plan on devil tails. It has not been a great time making these red ones. Well, this one red one. <laughs> but at least my stretch needles are here now, so I've got them. And I can use them on my regular neoprene now as well. Today, I am sewing the beans onto the hands. It is the most boring thing anyone could ever do. It is so boring. <laughs> but we'll get it done. I've got YouTube to keep me company. Maybe I'll go watch some anime or something. But yeah, that's today's job. Well, I just went up to the post office because I sold the red devil tail. So that's done. I'm a little bit out of breath from walking up the village, but... <laughs> anyway, today my yellow pan pastel arrived. It is more vibrant than I would have liked. I would have preferred a more uh, less orangey yellow, but on the pictures it looked all right. Whatever, we'll work with it. So now I have my two pan pastels. So I just need to do a little bit more spray painting on the mask, which you haven't actually seen with its colour, I don't think. It's very neon. I'll, I'll get a clip of it before I do more on it. Um, it's very neon. <laughs> so these, the idea of these is to kind of match what I've done to this. I already showed this, it looks very pale on camera, it's just the auto colour correction making it look more pale than it is, but hopefully, touch wood, I should be able to replicate this pretty similarly on a larger scale with these. So there's the plan. Otherwise, I have sewn all of the paw pads onto the paws. Uh, today I'm just gonna, um, uh, what's the word, like correct the directioning of these claws so that they're all pointing forwards. And then I will cuff the ends and the paws will be done. I hate making paws so much. It takes so much time and effort and it's all hand so I hate making paws. But we're almost done with them. Then I can make the tail and the pre-made will be done and the vlog will be done. Yay! <laughs> I have no idea how long this vlog is. So, um, yeah. Here is the Yugi mask currently. As you can see, it is quite orange. That's because I was using this paint. So today I am using my cotton pads and my chalk pastels and uh, correcting the skin tone to be more of uh, this shade. We're almost at the end of this vlog, but the last problem is I don't know what to do for the tail for this pre-made. Like today I was like, oh, maybe I'll just, you know, use that pattern, make a plain black one. But then I'm like, is that just like too simple? My original concept for this did have a plain black tail, so I might go for it. Uh, here's, this is the first rendition. I might just make this for later. This is a de design for later. Uh, this tail had more detail on it, but you know, the design changed drastically between these two. So, um, this is the first rendition of the 
Casino K9, and this is what I actually made. Uh, you know, a couple details changed here and there. Do I just make a plain black tail? Is that what I do? I don't know. It's been two days of me, like, seriously thinking with all my brain power what to do with this tail. <sighs> anyway, it's currently raining a lot outside. The camera doesn't do it justice. It is a torrential downpour, and I'm very happy about it. It's very nice to listen to. So I got my window open. Alright, I just filmed the information video for Casino K9. And uh, I, n I still have to edit it, but I think that means it's the end of the vlog. Oh, there's one more thing I'd like to show you. Let me go and show you that now. Before that, look at this absolutely atrocious tripod I used. A tripod. <laughs> you can see I just piled everything on the floor to clear off. Well, I cleared off the sofa thinking I was going to use the sofa for, for pictures, but the uh, dark navy blue sofa, black fursuit, they kind of blend together in the photos, so we're just going to use my desk. Well, I did use my desk. <laughs> Anyway, I need to clean up the floor. This tri tripod is just a box, a chair, and another chair. My chair is so dirty, I need to clean it. Anyway, let's go and show you the Yugi mask. Alright, here we have Yugi. Now, he is a little bit patchy, to be honest. The paint job, uh, the, the pastel job, sorry. But, oh no, a fly has pooed on his face. He's got a freckle. We have had so many flies in the house, it has been horrible. I don't know where they've all come from. Our neighbour is also suffering from tons of flies in the house. It's horrible. And he's pooed on Yugi's face. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, poor Yugi. I'll have to wash that off. It's fine. <sighs> anyway, point is, uh, the pastel job did make him a little bit uh, patchy. But, you know, maybe it'll work out and look kind of natural. Like, no, no one has, like, fully, like... Look, look, my skin's a little bit, like, mottled, I guess, on camera there. Just a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to match my own skin tone. I might do another layer of white, I'm not sure. I mean, ugh, it's kind of difficult to show. In real life, I'm pretty close to my skin tone. On camera, I look much more pink. <laughs> um, but we're, all, we're almost there. Yugi should be done soon. Well, his his skin tone should be done soon. Uh, what else can I say about it? Not much. I mean, this has been a few layers of layering pastels. I used to, you've seen these. There's my little uh, sponges that I've been using. Um, this yellow, I thought it was going to be way too vibrant, but it actually worked out pretty well once you mix it with the white. You do yellow and white in the same layer. So I didn't spray between the yellow and the white. I just yellow and white, same layer, then spray. <laughs> I only did one layer of yellow as well since I thought it might be a bit too vibrant. Anyway, uh, I think we've done like one can of Mr. Super Clear so far. Like I had half a can, this is empty. And then I've, this was a full can, I think it's maybe about half full now. <laughs> oh, this it is the most expensive personal project I've done so far. It is, it's a money pit, it's a money pit. <laughs> I need to wash that fly poo off its face now. Um, so there's Yugi. Oh, this this clip's a bit long, but you know, I've, I've given you all the information. So there he is. Oh, let me show you the inside of the mask. Like, he's got like paint in there. Uh, I'll need to wash that out and stuff. Anyway. Anyway, there's Yugi. He's almost ready for the next steps. And uh, then I'll be able to film my little tutorial video about him. Alright, that means that's the end of this vlog. I have no idea how long this thing is going to be. It must be. Uh, a movie length vlog again so <laughs> hope you like long vlogs thank you so much for watching please do not hit the like button as that probably hurts and it's not very nice so maybe shake his hand instead with that being said i hope to see you in the next video and bye